There we go. Can you hear me okay? What's up, man? Yeah. What's up, buddy? Not too much. How are you? Oh, you know, man. Same old mess, dude. Trying to make it. Channel's doing well. Everything's going okay? I'm doing good, man. I'm excited to see the growth of your band, dude. I've been watching you guys on Instagram and such, just trying to keep up. I've, I got a lot going on, so I like to keep like a, there's a handful of bands that I really like to just kind of watch what's going on because I really mm -hmm. like the music, you know, and people that I know, Ryan and all his stuff that he's doing, of course. And then um, after meeting you and, and getting to know you a little bit, it's been kind of exciting to watch the, I don't know if explosion is the right word, but it's what it felt like to me, man. I've been watching these shows just get bigger and more wild and I'm like, I want to be there. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what's up everybody how you doing welcome back to the punk rock review podcast i've got my first repeat guest today this is adam from conservative military image i'm sure you recognize the man so what's up adam how you been oh, i'm good brother still alive yeah right dude that's you know that's the best we can hope for right now i mean the world is in a very crazy weird place right now but um yeah dude so it's been about i don't know four or five months since i talked to you last but since we spoke last a lot of stuff has happened with your band and i just wanted to hear from you get some uh you know hear, hear about your experiences what's going on and and, and what, what you're trying to accomplish hold on my dog just burst in the room let me get him out of here yeah no doubt come on big guy watch out oh. hey thanks for watching my video i just wanted to let you know that i've got a couple of things going on outside of youtube if you're interested in supporting the channel you can check out my label 31 records our band camp is linked in the description you can check out Instagram.com slash knife crime apparel for handmade merchant art by me. Or you can go check out my Patreon. I have a Patreon exclusive Discord, channel input, merch giveaways, all kinds of benefits to being a Patreon uh, viewer. So, yeah, thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. Now, back to the video. Okay. So, he was like, What's going on in there? <laughs> uh, he's an American bulldog. And if I start talking and if I'm real quiet and then I just start talking and he's asleep, he wakes up, starts barking like, what is going on? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so yeah, I just wanted to hear from you, man. And, and get some, uh, I don't know, touch base, man. I really enjoy your music and I like what I'm seeing. I like what I'm hearing and I'm, I'm happy for you. So yeah. Cheers. How's it, how's it been the last few months? Cheers. It's been pretty good. When was the last time that we talked? Do you remember when we, that we, we talked like a few. Okay. So you came to Texas like three weeks after we spoke. Yeah, your, cool. so yeah, it's been like really? yeah like summertime late like yeah, yeah. middle okay. of summer yeah yeah so we because we were in texas in july all right yeah so since you yeah the um yeah the full length uh, had just came out and pretty much since then and it's just been about playing getting out um getting shows getting live, you know playing live and um trying to get as far and as play as many times as we can just trying to keep it running um it's been awesome man the shows have been so sick um like it's a live band like always has been so to like really be able to to play enough to where um like people are coming to see us again or getting to see us more than once um it's been awesome dude like the the growth of the band has been like crazy uh i'm like very very uh very grateful for it um but it's like it's just awesome how many people are like kind of actually fucking with us you know uh, so that's super cool, man. We've just been doing the thing, yeah, uh, playing a bunch of great shows. And then we just got back from Europe last week. So we did like 13, 13 shows, I think, in Europe. And so, um, and that was fucking amazing. Uh, like, I mean, I knew it was going to be a good, um, like a good run, but dude, it was, it was even better. Honestly, even better than I could have ever imagined, man. Every that's show, awesome. every show was awesome. Just like, it's like, it was fun, man. Like it was cool. It had we had a great time, man. Lost I lost a lot of money and I made a lot of money. Uh, Dude. Gambling. <laughs> oh, nice. Dude, I saw some footage, man. Those shows, they look so fun. Like, oh yeah. You know, it's like it's just kind of the same. If we had a band that was from over there coming over here, and we we knew that might be the only opportunity we got to see them, people yeah. were losing their minds, man. Oh yeah. And it was it yeah, was awesome, bro. Around. Like there had been, there was like, I, it was really cool just getting to meet like all kinds of people, but there's a lot of people who had been like, like real, really down with the band from like day one, like people who have been like 
like active supporters um, for a long time and had been looking forward to this, the show for like months, you know? So, um, yeah, it was awesome, man. We got to play with some like great bands. Um, you know, we played with Clobber um, for the first few days, which is okay. awesome. I love them and like asked them to play. Um, so they did the first three days in England and Wales. And then we, we did like Paris. We played with Squillette and then we did um, oh. we did Belgium. We played with Instructor and Pressure Pack. And in the Netherlands, we did uh, we played with Young Ones, who we did that Blitz split with uh, the Blitz cover nice. split. Yeah, so that was like the seven inch release for that show. Uh, I mean, you know, we played with like lower class brats, like Sweet. on two shows, and Reckless Upstarts on two shows. Um, you know, and just uh, met like a lot of awesome people, and like yeah, man, it was really really good experience. And there's just so much awesome music there. Like, it's just cool to like be a part of that. And, like, you know. We're already going there, back, so. <laughs> there's a lot of great music over in Europe right now. Like, a lot, a lot. A, a yeah, lot man. of bands I listen to don't even speak English. They're, like, a lot of French stuff I'm listening to these days. Um, yeah, man. That's really like Everybody cool. in Paris I met, like, um, everyone I met was, like, in a band that I, like, knew or that I liked. That's I awesome. Like, I was like, Jesus Christ. I was like, like, the whole room is just all in bands, you know, that I, like, <laughs> I love. It was like, That's great. It was cool. Dude, I uh, I just did my very first trip outside the state of Texas about I don't know three or four weeks ago. I, I went to Vegas to go do some stuff, and uh, I went to the Punk Rock Museum. And my question is like, I had never traveled before, and I ran into some snags just going to Vegas. What was it like going to Europe? Was the was the travel uh, was it smooth? Was it easy? I had, had have you ever gone to Europe before? I've been to Europe before, but never like okay. with a band or anything like that. Um. But yeah, I mean, for the most part, it was pretty, pretty smooth. Like we, we flew into London um, and then we stayed in London for a few days. Um, Charlie from Chubby and the Gang uh, filled in on guitar for us. Love so that he, band. Yeah. So he played, he played second guitar for us on the tour, um, nice. which was awesome because like not only is he just like an incredible musician but he's legitimately like the funniest human i have ever met in my life and, that's awesome um just sincerely just a great guy and like a you know he like definitely he's been a boy for a while but he like fits with the band <laughs> like everybody loves him and the dynamics in the band in the van and stuff like that are great but like yeah we had a driver um from the check who had a van or like a passenger bus type van and drove to london essentially to pick us up and start the tour so he drove us for the whole tour there was nice. like the logistics of like you know traveling aren't really like wasn't really that difficult but like just the, like the day-to-day -day stuff man of just like oh you know we have to leave at this time in order to get here at this time and then we got to check in and then get our stuff loaded and sound right checked, and then you know load out and then get you know pay out and then get everything you know packed up and then we get they give us the keys to our hotel and then we got to go to the hotel and check in and it's just like that over and over again so it's like, yeah you know what i mean like it's, it's like, probably exhausting yeah yeah i mean it's work you know like for sure yeah it's cool as hell to go over there and like be right like punk rock you know essentially but um you know like if you care about it which uh, you know we do like it's i, I treat it as like a work trip right because it's like we're yeah. putting in work because like we have this product that we care about so um it was like uh you know it, was, it wasn't necessarily exhausting um but it was just very just kind of you know always there's something going on next or this or oh i gotta make sure this guy person knows here or we're here or call them right you know but the little uh, things are pretty important over there i would imagine yeah yeah for sure it's just a different economy for like the gig life over there yeah but, yeah man it was like an awesome tour like I, I mean, it was like one drive that was like 12 hours long that like really sucked Ugh. Um, yeah, but, like, <laughs> that one was like it was really shitty. That was the worst one. But other than that, man, everything else the drives were were pretty, you know, pretty tame. You know, four or five hours at the most. Um, That's not too bad. Yeah, yeah. So it was fun, dude. Just That's honestly. awesome, man. I'm super glad y'all got to go over there. I can imagine that, like traveling around the U.S., it's like you go to other cities where you're not familiar, but it's still like the U.S., so it's got a familiarity to it. Yeah. Going somewhere else, you're like. Okay, like it's the same thing, but you're in different places with people that you aren't familiar with. I can imagine that 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 creates a couple of hiccups that you won't see coming things. But that's awesome, man. Touring in Europe would probably be every American band's dream, oh, I would for think. Sure. It's like what every I mean, anyone who ever starts a band, right? That's like the that's like 
top right there. It's like, you made it right. Like for me, like right. a bucket list of like, these are the things that like, I want to do with this band, like before I call it. And it's like going to Europe. I mean, like, dude, I would never imagine like I would ever be in a band that went to Europe. You know what I mean? And let it right. go, not only go there, but like have just amazing shows and like makes like do so many great things. And then like already, already planning to go back. So I'm super cool, man. It's, I'm like really grateful. And I honestly, I like, dude, I've been all over America, like time and time again, over and over, you know, everywhere. Uh, so it's like, I love it, but man, it's like going to do all that kind of stuff overseas. It's just, everything feels like new and fresh. So you never really get like, I mean, I was like, even when I was tired, I was like down to do whatever. I was like, Oh yeah, we're going to yeah. go like, we're castle or something. We got some time. I'm like, yeah, let's go. You know what I mean? Um, that's that's how it was on my little trip too because i had never gone anywhere and i was like well i don't want to waste any time like if we have some time to like squeeze in like a little thing like we drove <laughs> we went out there we drove to the grand canyon bro like i was like I, I'm, I'm close enough where i have to go see that and yeah, so yeah, like yeah. we went out and saw that so i, I totally understand like being kind of tired but still being like i don't want to waste my time bro like you, you never know you may not be able to go back one day Who, there's anything that could happen man so uh you know yeah do yeah, it while man. you can yeah hell yeah yeah it's we did, uh, we so, did a little bit of everything. How's the, uh, man, what's it like with this? I don't know how to ask this. The response to the record has been crazy. So it had just come out digitally when we talked. Yeah, and then yeah. the, the LP was coming out. And I was trying to, I've, I've got a couple of copies of it, but I was trying to get some for like buddies too, because my friends don't really, they're guys that I showed the music to. And they're like, this is amazing. And I was like, yeah, well, I'm getting some copies of it. So I'll try to get you one. The site like crashed. So <laughs> yeah, it's right. It was, right. It, was, it was so what's the yeah, like what's the deal, man? How's that uh, been? How's it been getting through that, uh experiencing the fact that you need a second press so fast and all this stuff? How, how's that been? Well, it was awesome, man. Like, you know, the when the with the first press got put out, like for the number or whatever, I think it was like fourteen hundred or thirteen hundred for the first press. And I was like all right, cool. You know what I mean? Like, that'll be, that'll be really good. And I mean, they all went like super quick, which is awesome. And like the second press was already kind of planned, but to where, I mean, the second press is already sold out too. I mean, yeah, like we had copies of that on the Europe tour and, you know, by the last day we were all out. I mean, we had, that's to, awesome. And then it's already, it's actually, it's cool that, that, um, people are being able to get the album. You know what I mean? Like, that's a big, yeah. thing. he was like, like making sure that like, I don't care how many presses infinite, whatever. I don't care. I was like, I just want people to have, be able to have the album. Um, so it's really awesome that so many people like have the physical copy. Cause like, mm -hmm. you know, like, uh, I know I did the insert and artwork for that. And like, I like worked my ass off on that thing. Like, I, I mean, I probably put in literally 200, 300 hours on that Damn. so for like that to be in people's hands it's like awesome i'm like yes all right cool um because that is awesome. a good feeling yeah you know what i mean it's really awesome because it's like part of the <clears throat> part of the the um the experience right is you know the physical the media right like holding it i, th I think so yeah i mean that's why records are, are you know there's a resurgence in vinyl for the last you know 10 15 right is because like no matter what technology happens right the to be uh, the physical like holding and the experience you have with a, with a record is, you know, it's like something that can't be um, duplicated. So it's just um, it's cool that there's like it didn't just like peak and then you know we put out the album and then it's kind of just it did whatever. Like it's honestly it's like been consistently like you know m getting more and more attention or people are discovering it later. You know what I mean? And, yeah. Like, um, and so if that's really, I mean, that's like what every band wants, you know, so it's, I, it's awesome. Um, and we are already on the third press, like the third press. That's is amazing. Right now. Yeah. I definitely, I think the album's got staying power. Um, okay. None of the lyrics are like dated. Nothing's super, uh, what would you call that? You know, current event. Oh, none topical, of, it's, yeah, it's yeah. Like, yeah. It's like, it's like there's staying power and there's re-listenability and the lyrics are motivational to me anyways. It got me doing different things in my life. Uh, and that, that's a that's a big deal to somebody like me who who needs that i, I kind of mm -hmm. need i live through my music like whatever i'm listening to is kind of you can kind of tell what's going on in my life by like what am i listening to and uh you know i mean the, the end of the year is cool i'm gonna be doing like a top 10 albums of the year list and i'll just tell you right now this is gonna be on that list i'm not gonna tell you where you'll just have to watch the video and my man's <laughs> like what i ain't got time for that but uh no, yeah, no i yeah, appreciate dude, it man it's it's so 
it's such a good record, man. And, and I, I'm glad I I don't even remember how I stumbled upon it. I just saw it and listened to it. And I was like, damn, this is crazy. But so one thing I was looking through the comments of the last time we spoke, because I was kind of thinking like, OK, what did people say that they might want to hear that I didn't get to last time we spoke? And one thing was, as people were asking, you know, hey, why didn't you ask him about his lyrical content? It seems like there's some uh, some history there maybe some incarceration or something like that. And I was like, hell, I didn't know it didn't even come up. So if you don't mind, would you speak on your lyrical content? Where does it come from? What are your lyrics? Like, where, where do they derive from? Where, where, where are you getting this content? Because it does kind of sound like you might have an, a background with that or maybe some close friends or something. So where are you coming up with these lyrics? Yeah, so, um, I mean, that's like a, it's like a really broad, like tough question. Of, it's kind of, you know, so I'm, I, I've been writing in some form or another for my entire adult life like mm -hmm. uh keeping journals you know writing like lyrics for a band that i would never start you know what i mean or poems sure. or or um you know any sort of like i'm always writing i've like literally i've just always been writing and so i've been writing long enough and i've learned from enough different writers and i've read enough different writers you know a lot of different books you know throughout the periods i guess pretty much the last 20 years where I've gotten into different genres of, you know, literature or authors or anything like that and discovered like different philosophies and, you know, going to college and then getting exposed to other stuff like that um, has like all kind of, you know, ultimately led to the, like a, it's left its imprint in some way or another. And so like when I write, um, you know, like, I'm always, I don't ever write anything that like, I wouldn't be able to, um, I don't want to say like, to be able to like back up essentially. Like, I'm not being sure. like, yo, I'm going to, I'm not here going to, I'm going to kill you when I see you or type stuff. You know what I mean? Where, yeah. That stuff's cool. But like, I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to kill somebody. You know what I mean? Um, and, and so like, I always try to kind of write for me, like a really actual perspective. Um, and everything that I write is like, it's experiences of mine um, um, or thoughts or feelings or something that's happened to me or, you know, something that I did. Um, and, but I also like to kind of write for, for other people as well. So like, all right. So for instance, I've never been to prison or jail. Okay. Okay. Um, but uh, I don't know. I feel like maybe any good writer, right. There's like, there's metaphor or meaning or, you know, a symbol, symbolism in, in that, right? You know, like being grounded is like being in jail, right? You know, I mean, yeah. that's a very elementary um, explanation of it. But no, but those so, two. But I, have, but I have friends and I have, you know, people who like have gone to jail or gone to prison. Um, and there's also a lot of people who've like never been in the military. But like that doesn't necessarily mean that like you can't take something out of you know how, what's written or or what i'm saying right like um so that's kind of the thing it's like oh man like there's a song i there's a song for me you know what i mean like right this representation who, yeah somebody's like oh crap you know like for a, a lot of people are like oh yeah the conduct unbecoming song is like you know his like struggle with like ptsd or survivor's guilt or something and i'm like well i mean maybe a little bit of it. Yeah. Like that's definitely like a very personal song for me. Um, but it's also like, I don't want people to think that songs like, Oh, you have to have been in the military to, to, you know, feel this. And, you know, a lot of people that, who haven't or gone to war or, but have lost like brothers or, you know, have felt a certain way. Um, and in that song in particular, right that's an example right so a lot of like yeah. veteran my veteran friends who mess with the band um really like that song but also just other people who have no affiliation with the military sure. also really like that song um because it's ultimately it's i mean what is what is like life it's struggle you know for so, everybody yeah right so the, the everyone's struggle uh is is um in a different direction but it's a struggle nonetheless so you can yeah. look to your left and your right, and you can see, you know, there's a, a commonality in that. So, uh, you know, like, that's kind of how I write. I write, like, I would say mainly, like, like these are all, like, things that have happened to me or, or ways I've felt for sure. Like, I don't ever, yeah. like, 
every single line, every single word like has meaning, has like, there's like something to it. You know, like if I had enough time or if I had enough drinks, I could talk to you like all night about it. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's kind of, you know, I, I uh, writing lyrics is my least favorite and my favorite thing. <laughs> it's nice. Like, Dude, it, it's stressful. Yeah, it's really, it's, it's really but it's also, I, I really you know, like it's very important for me too. So, yeah. Well, I mean, you don't have to have been so the way, at least in my experiences, I don't have to have been involved like firsthand in an experience to be affected by that experience. Yeah, my yeah, sister sure. has gone through some things that I can tell you I could write a song about. Yeah, yeah. So, I think that's a really great answer. And I kind of thought that might be what your answer was. And everybody needs representation. Yeah. Uh, well, it's like songwriters and, too, right? Like they write songs from the perspective of someone uh, else. Like, yeah. Right? Like, you know, like a lot of singer songwriters do that where they sing about they're writing a song as if they are this person. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. No, a lot of bands, a lot of singer songwriters, a lot of, a lot of poets do that. And I think that's important. Um, yeah. And every, I think why, why can't, why can't, you know, punk, punk or, or hardcore bands do the same thing? Um, and some some do like, you know, I always think of like, I don't know, the first thing that comes to mind is like, like Modern Life is War was like mm -hmm. one of the ones that really like wrote from other perspectives. Um, but like, yeah, I don't think uh, you should be labeled like a fake or of, a, a, you know, false uh, if you're writing I songs definitely, about, other, you know, experiences like. Yeah, I think that would be pretty unfair to do that to somebody, because, I mean, the reality is, is that I think specifically punk rockers and hardcore kids and like skinheads and such we we all have this like weird obsession with authenticity but what is that really like i i feel representation of you know different kinds in yeah i mean music. like if if you want if you want to say that the word the things that i say or write about are are, are corny or or dumb then absolutely right like that's fine i don't care you're <laughs> but you're gonna you're gonna you could take whatever you want out of it right so some people will see it and they'll take a lot of stuff out of it other people will will take it at face value and say oh this is i'm not that person so there's i don't i couldn't relate to that um but it's funny like as, as many people as like that have mentioned like they really like the lyrics a lot <laughs> there's like also like a, a weird amount of people that are like the lyrics are so dumb and corny and i'm like what the the, the like extremity of both is so funny to me too because it's like i don't know it, it's so i can see how that'd be part, polarizing you know, though. like it's the worst part and i'm like man that's that's crazy <laughs> that, i mean they i mean they, they i can see how they'd be polarizing but i also think that people that would say that are probably either not understanding it or that's just not who you're speaking to and that's okay too man like uh we're not all the same we're not all gonna be the same and I think, you know, I guess, like you said, it is what it is. Like, what are you going to do? Fit, force them to like your lyrics? Like, that's kind of. Well, I've said, uh, I've said this before, but like, I don't like that is a choice, right? You're, you're choosing not to like that. I don't like that. Well, that's your choice. Are you choosing not to like it? Um, but, you know, that's fine. But if you, there's, you can take something from anything, man. From anything in the For world. sure. Everything well, from, the, from the best experience to the worst experience to the best book to the worst book. And everything in between. There's something to be taken from everything. And, you know, I use those. You should always use the opportunity. I learned just as much from, like, the best leaders I've ever had. I've learned just as much from the worst. Like, the absolute worst boss. For sure. Me. I've been like, I see that and I'm like, okay, this is the worst leader I've ever had in my life. Or the worst boss. I'm never going to be like this when I get into that position. right? And, like, that's Bro. the takeaway. is like, I knew how that person made me feel. And I knew... Like what the you know things they were always were doing wrong or could have done better, and I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna apply it. I was just talking about that with my wife because uh, I don't remember how it came up, but my role as the leader of this house and the father of my children came up, and she's like, "No, man, you're an awesome dad." I, I don't remember what we we're talking about, and I and oh, it was I think it was because we were comparing like our parents to us, and I was like, "Well, you know, my dad was." I don't want to be like that guy. He was never around. He yeah. didn't care. And yeah. so I, I, I take that and I go, Oh, well, okay, good. That's the example that I don't want. So I learned, like you said, I learned just as much from a good example as I would a bad, and he was a bad example. So I'll just go over here and do the opposite. And hopefully that'll do what I'm attempting to do. 
but uh yeah i mean i i think your lyrics are wonderful man i i Thanks. yeah i was a little surprised to get that question but I, I thought man i never really thought about it much and uh i think every great storyteller i think if you know how to tell a story that you're going to be able to pay attention and get things from other sources yeah and relay that to the people that need to hear it and i think that's great so yeah yeah i mean you know the, the band has something we represent a certain thing and a certain way of, of living we have something to say you know and then the the moment that i don't have anything to say or that i i'm, I'm running i run out of what i want to say like that's when it's time to walk away you know so mm. like until then it's like uh, you know I, I i don't know when that is but i'll know when yeah so I'm like okay i'm like i've said all i have to say you know what i mean um like that's that's it's that dope. would be a, a <laughs> courageous move i think that would be something uh can you imagine having having that happen to you where you're like okay i'm i'm kind of i'm kind of done speaking my piece but you know there's uh a financial incentive to continue doing what you're doing i oh, think yeah, that'd yeah. be something pretty admirable to continue to like stop even though you know you're like no it's just not my that's awesome that'd be Whew, that'd be a hard decision to make and I, I i can admit that i don't know if i'd be able to do that man yeah uh, i mean like yeah i don't like obviously while the band is is active it's important to, for the band to be uh like th it's to be financially sustainable and the and only reason for that is so i so not only myself the entire band yeah, but I'm speaking from my perspective. Continue to do the band, right? right. Like that's what it is. Uh, um, I'm I don't see this as a, some sort of like, yeah, you know, like it is a career for people, um, and that's awesome because that's a great world that we live in that sure. allows, you know, people to be in the bands. Like our favorite bands are now able to do that. If you want to see your favorite band live, and then that's their job, you're gonna see them, you know. So right, like, that's sick. But um, yeah, from f like from for me at least, like. Uh, as long as the band is able to sustain itself uh, and mm -hmm. like continue to like do what we want, like what we want to do, that's important. And, yeah. Yeah. But like, I'm also like, I don't know. I mean, I'm not trying to like loom over everyone's head that I'm. Oh yeah, we're breaking up. It's, it's not no. like that at all. But like, no, but to have like a, you know, you have you have a a, a goal in mind, and and you know, and like you said, it's it. I think people would be able to tell if you were just. Uh, you know, was it uh, rinse, wash, repeat, just like a cycle? Just, people would know if you were just being like, okay, I'm just gonna do this and keep on keeping on, versus like, I need to do this. And yeah. you know, I mean, fans go into hiatus, and sometimes they come back, and you can tell it's because they have something to say. Sometimes they come back, and you could tell it's because they want a paycheck. Uh, yeah, I think it's sure. better to be like, no, I'm just done doing this part. I mean, yeah. life comes in phases, I think, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I've lived like you know, like I've lived a, a full life up to this point. So I have, I have a lot of stuff to, to talk, you know, that I've, yeah, that to talk about, or that I've, um, is like, you know, is uh, like writing and being creative with the band is like really helpful for me. Um, you know, I'm like the happiest I've been in my entire life <laughs> is like doing right. the band, you know, it's like <clears throat> so having the outlet for that is important. Um, and so I do have like a lot of things that have over the, years many years have like you know um been compartmentalized into me so i like getting them out for there's a lot to pull from essentially sure yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean which is great right. yeah I, I like the idea too of like you know like going out on top man and it's like whether on Dude, your own on right your own accord too it's a very bold and difficult move to make and you know the like some of the best bands like that like live on forever you know, like the singer died at like their peak. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, Nirvana. Would Sublime I mean, really be as popular as they are? Dude, if that yeah, right. Die? You know, I I like Sublime actually. People give me a lot of I support. Do. Hey, uh, <laughs> good music's but, good music, man. Um, but uh, yeah, like you know, something like that where it's like the death cements their their status before they have enough time to to stick around and release right. a, a long line of crappy albums and everyone's like, Oh, I like the old stuff better. You know, right. right. I, I was thinking of it in like, the, to be that. and like with the MMA, like how Habib quit at 29 and 0 and like, 
we, we we get to sit around and go, yeah, but what would have happened if he had fought three more? We don't know. He, he, he yeah. like, I don't even, I'm not even a fan of the guy, but like, you have yeah. to respect that he was like, all right, I'm done, I'm out. Yeah. But Barry, but Barry Sanders, that running back from the Detroit Lions, did the same. Mm. He's like the greatest running back ever, dude. Yeah. He like, he played for, and then he just, he's like, I'm done, I'm out. <laughs> That's so crazy, away. bro. Yeah. That is a hard like, decision to make. It's, it's like the biggest, the biggest flex ever. And it just <laughs> leaves open this entire conversation for the rest of of yeah time is like what could have been what happened oh my god he never even had time to spoil it you know what i mean right that's so amazing like, man uh so okay from your perspective i would think that you're like okay we've got this record it just came out blah 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 but from the, like the listener's perspective i've been jamming this record for i don't know 4 or 5 months now i'm not tired of it by any stretch of the word but do you guys have any like any kind of like goals for the next, let's say, 12 months? Are you trying to put out some more music? I know you did that split, but that was a cover song, right? Yeah. Um, but uh, what are the goals for the next 12 months for the band? Like, let's say by the end of 2024, do you have anything in mind? Or are you not even thinking that yet? Are you just trying to think of maybe touring more or what? Uh, I mean, like, yeah, right now, the, the right now the focus is like getting getting the the show uh, like out, like playing live, yeah. getting to the places so people could see us live. Um, and like, that's definitely the priority, but like, I don't yeah. ever, I never stop writing or, or, yeah. or like, or drawing or being in any sort of creative, like I'm always doing it. Sometimes it's like a little bit more intense. Other times it's kind of passive, but do we have like, I think we already have like eight full songs done. Nice. <laughs> so Dude, we, I mean, yeah, we have, like, <laughs> that's the, that's the uh, life of a creative type. Yeah, man. It's like, I don't know. Uh, uh, yeah, we have like, I mean, we got like songs ready to go. Like, we're actually re- we're going to record, mm, I think, with the end of this month. Yeah, because um, we got three uh, songs coming out uh, in December. Nice. Yeah, we're doing like three songs. It's just like a, it's just like a digital singles drop, kind of similar cool. to like what we did with like, excuse me, with Perp Walk and Not Your Skin okay. and Oliver Kahn, where right? like just nothing it's not a like release it's just yeah you know here's here's a track like i i've mentioned this on the last time we talked about how like the singles thing that used to be you know kind of the industry standard in the 70s yeah. and 80s, you know uh is like always been cool to me so i like the idea of like oh yeah cool there's an album and then just like a randomly like oh here's a song you know what i mean um so I, like it keeps people interested keeps yeah. your name at the front of their heads you know my or front of their minds yeah. rather excuse me um yeah, I think that's a great idea. So like, yeah, the cool that's part? kind of what we do. We just kind of like, like, you know, I want to make sure that there's stuff like that because it's fun, you know, like for my favorite bands when those come out, you know, and all of a sudden, oh, cool, you know, there's a new song, what? You know what I mean? And it's awesome and I get excited. <laughs> so no, like, dude, that's the best you know, thing. Doing that, we so yeah, we got like three songs, like a, well, it's like, it's, it's actually four songs, but it's like three, tracked as three songs for. Okay. Uh, like a digital release that'll be out and by the end of this year and then we're going to record um an ep uh like in the spring well like i guess early spring march i think yeah okay so we're gonna record like five or six songs for that nice so yeah there'll be like another like proper release i don't know if there's going to be a full length next year there's there's not going to be a full length next year okay um but there well, will there will definitely be for for every year that this band is alive and active, like there will be there will be new music coming out from nice. from us. Like it feels like for me, I already feel like man, the album came out in May, and it's like we're already in November, and I, there's only one like new song. Like for me, that is like a long gap. <laughs> but I don't. That's like, good news like, to the fans, though. Yeah, if you want to like, keep it going, people, that's but. good for us. Yeah, yeah, but like, so I don't know, you know, it's well, cool to get like a little, you know, more than a two minute snippet. I know our songs are right. short too, so yeah, know. but like the cool part about the digital release is, is that you, A, you can get it out whenever you want. Yeah. But it's cool that if it's not on a physical release, at some point when you guys decide to either take a break or whatever, man, who cares? At your five year anniversaries, 10 year anniversary, you can do some kind of like weird collection of songs on a physical release and it'll have you have a bunch of material that you can go, this never got put on anything. Let's put all these on there and give a collection yeah. out. The bands have done that forever. So yeah. there's all kinds of benefits to doing it the way you're doing it. Yeah, I, I love that. I really love that stuff too. Like, you know, 
I mean, we just did like the the compilation for Lionheart, where it's like they did all all of the the skinhead demo and the summertime skinhead and all the singles, and they put it all on one record because like a lot of people just wanted it on vinyl. Yeah, so, like we were, that just came out, you know, and that sold really well. Uh, and so like yeah, doing something like that where we add on add it on like an extra song, um, or <clears throat> something like that, but. You know, I, if it was up to me, man, like I would be constantly recording. Yeah. Uh, but there's also like with like how we write songs and like, you know, how we how we kind of put everything together in the end. Uh, it's it's important that ever like that we are able to because I've been talked off of ledges before and I'm like, I am so glad that you told me to, to, to do this or that we decided to do this instead of, of this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because like you, you could get really in your head about it. So I respect the like organic um, process of yeah. Let's we have eight full songs. They're ready to go. But when it's time time to be in the studio and start putting them into you know on tape or whatever. Yeah. Um, there's like changes that get made, and then there's you know oh yeah let's do this. And it's always for us at least it's always worked out for the best. So I respect that process. And sometimes it's hard to hold on to that for a long time. But yeah. in the end, it's like the like what we release or what comes out from it i'm always like really happy with so yeah like the next year is just just shows man it's like yeah we're gonna be recording some stuff and you know we got like a a split that's gonna be coming out too but we're going back to europe in May, and then june and july yeah we're doing like a bunch of fests over there there's like a bunch of other stuff that's coming up that i like um i can't really announce yet because it's not fully like uh confirmed but like there's like cool stuff uh and yeah we're gonna be in canada so we're booking canada right now because we've been getting hounded for that so we're trying to be nice canada in march yeah we're gonna go to mexico in february that's gonna be that's sick. amazing man that's i'm so happy for you guys dude like i don't I mean I, don't, I barely know you but like i'm so stoked for you guys Thank like you. I appreciate that's, it. that's so fun man so yeah, i know you cool, gotta get man. going here in a minute um one thing i like to ask that I've just started asking people just to kind of get to, I don't know, know the artist a little bit more is if you had a chance, I got two questions and we'll end on this. The first one is, is if you had a chance to tour with any band right now and you could go on like a full tour with them, who, who would you pick? Who do you, who's the one of the bands like that you really want to tour with just for whatever reason, doesn't matter why, just who would you choose? The chisel. Let's go. That was quick too. Damn. All right. The ch- my man said the chisel. All right, <laughs> cool. Okay. So, now it's time for the stupid question, but it's fun. If you were on tour and you got attacked by a bunch of ninjas, all right, just out of the blue, bam, ninjas, who do you want to be on tour with you so that you can whoop that ninja ass? <laughs> Bro, I'm telling you, dude, it's, a, it's, a, it's an important question because you never know when a clan of ninjas might just jump out and attack the van, bro. Anybody in FSU. Let's go. That's a really good answer, actually. That's that's a legitimate answer. All right, Adam. Thank you so much for hanging out, man. I know you got shit to do. Appreciate uh, you, bro. Dude, hell yeah, man. I'll reach back out in six more months and see if you'll have some time. But uh, I will keep watching you guys, keep supporting you guys. If there's anything I can do to help, let me know. Uh, Thanks, otherwise, man. everybody, go check out Conservative Military Image. When they come to your town, you better be at the show. Uh, yeah. Have a great day, like, guys. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. We'll see you all next time. Peace. Cheers, brother. Appreciate you, man. Hell yeah. Thanks, Adam. I appreciate you, bud. All right.